Hey, welcome back to the next part of our Starfield Let's Play. So, we're just going to go ahead and continue. Um, when last we left, um, I'm sure I was a lower level. Um, but we were going to do inventory management and build that ship that I didn't have to do on screen because, <clears throat> yeah, sitting in the same spot. I uh, didn't want to do it on screen because uh, it would take forever. Um, and it did, in fact, take forever. But, well, not really forever, but it took a long time, obviously. Uh, so, again, here on this channel, it is no muss, no fuss, and no cuss. We just don't do that. We're drinking Coke tonight. And that is my wife up above me in the office. So, we built a custom ship called the Ghoul. Da, da, da. And so we'll show you around Always real quick. A satisfying moment to return to your ship. So this was uh, not completely my idea. Um, did find uh, Angry Turtle Gaming, a um, fantastic YouTuber. He showed a uh, little thing on how to, a little uh, walkthrough on how to build this ship. Um, I did make some design changes though because I didn't like everything he did. Uh, for instance, I put the beds down here. I'm, I'm not sure why he put his upstairs, but uh, but okay. <clears throat> so you come into the ship, all right? And when you first come in, there's your living quarters. That's the two by one living quarters. Then we've got industrial workbench, sort of research lab spacesuit workbench, <coughs> weapon workbench, you know, across the hall, and we've got research lab, and we've got her in the way, we've got our farm lab, <coughs> and so come over here, we go upstairs, and we've got a captain safe over here, and that side here. We've got some storage units. <coughs> and we have nice lovely crew stations and nice lovely crew stations over here. So all in all, pretty nice. <coughs> this ship cost a fortune. Uh, when you come out here, here's the bridge. Very nice looking. And of course we put I think they're downstairs. But uh, we put windows in. It's good to be out and about. So you Thanks can look through the windows. And uh, you know, so you can see some of the outside of the ship. But that's a uh, that's a look on the inside. So we'll go ahead and sit down. Why he sat quick. He sat like really quick. Oops. Normally he doesn't do that. <coughs> So let's undock. And we'll show you the ship Checks here. We're free. So there it is. So all these nice lovely engines here. So let's go uh just real quick so you can see the actually you know what I could have done it on that on that station I can dock at that station there's a ship guy right there no no, no don't hit the station don't hit the station don't hit the station Whew, goodness let's redock <coughs> and we'll go into the ship services guy real quick and just show off what we've done Again, nothing story related, just station is but a running about trying to get purpose. this stuff completed. Like Alright, <coughs> I like to view and modify my ships. So, Alright, so there she is. And uh, it is colored in the colors of Ra's al Ghul, the, uh, from Batman. Um, and so, go into Ship Builder here, and... Uh, took me a while to get enough money for these the south 6830 engines now he was uh angry turtle used the 
Uh, which one was it? Let's see here. He used in his video. Oh, he must not sell them here. Well, barnacles. Uh, it was like a Sal engine, but it was like a 6300 or something. But I had done the Vanguard stuff, so I could buy the 6830. It was better, uh, less mass, <coughs> and they still only use two energy. So I bought those. Um, and I sacrificed one light year of jump for extra cargo. So 1480 extra cargo I placed here. Um, and then I put uh, on the front here, put some uh, Tyco braking engines just in the front. I thought about putting uh, sensor arrays on there just to kind of give it some flavor. But I like these engine brakes better. So we put those on there. Um, so it's pretty cool. Uh, most of the rest of it is was, was his recommendations. We did change a few things here and there. Just nothing big. But uh, for the most part, the rest of it was his recommendation. But we did add the engine brakes, added more cargo, changed the engines out for a different engine. <coughs> but yeah, pretty nice. Uh, but this, uh, this thing uh, cost a pretty penny because... When we, uh, when I went in to start building it, it said I had to have Starship design. And to go up on these, you have to install modifications. So I wasted a ton of credits just getting that, getting that set up, the Starship design. Uh, I eventually want to finish this off. But uh, I'm going to have to get, a, you know, make something else my home ship and just jump around. I'll do that off camera, too, because there's no point in uh, making people, well, I don't, can't make you watch anything. But but uh, putting up a Let's Play and it's just me jumping around with full stuff. So, but I had to uh, had to do that. So I had to run around and, and uh, adventure uh, to get money, just do some freelance adventuring. So just random outposts ran and did real quick so we could get money uh, and then we sold that and that was a lot of uh, waiting for 48 hours go and make the rounds and sell on neon wait for 48 hours go and make the rounds and sell on neon it was actually not 48 hours it was uh, 35 local hours but that ended up as 48 UT hours so that was actually more like 50 something UT hours but regardless we had to sit there and do it over and over uh, probably like five hours worth of just selling. It was a real pain in the hump. So, but, you know, it's done now. And uh, we now have our beautiful ship built. So, yay. So now we can go into missions and we can start looking for whatever was next. Why won't you let me see these? What's, what's going on here? Why can I not? Weird. Maybe we need to board the ship first. Usually we don't have to. But we'll board the ship first. And let's undock. Alright. I cannot seem to find this ship. I've run into it before. But yeah, it doesn't let me set course and, and find it. So... Beyond unearthed. So go to Nova Galactic Research Station. And then we've got uh, we've still got these to do as well, which are uh, Oh that's cool. Um but we still have to uh, do back to the grind deep cover. Um, I kind of like to get those done before we finish the main story. Um, so we're going to go to uh, let's let's go do this. Let's go see what's going on here. So let's set course. That's where Sarah said we should. Oh, I'm sorry. Other Sarah said we should go to the moon and science outpost, huh? But we should go to the moon and uh, <clears throat> and look around there. So, um, we 
also, eh, we'll just leave it as it is, I guess. ship's cargo is now 8,007. Yay! That's so much better. I'm just throwing everything in there now and selling from the ship. Which is cool. What is this in here? Nova Galactic Star Yard. Hmm. Interesting. You can dock in said star yard. <clears throat> yeah. But they're not responding though, so let's go see what's going on. They came back and looked at Earth. Never really looked at the moon though. Seals are good, air pressure are good. Mm. Mm. That's not promising. has a very dead space feel to it here. What? What? You're shooting at us. <coughs> Clip dick. Once again, we meet your Clip dick and spacers are fighting each other. Okay. One rose gold earring with a sapphire center. Synthetic, no monetary value, high sentimental value. If found, please contact. when you switch between games. did succeed at that before we were discovered. What are you going on about? It was the bathroom. Somebody locked the bathroom door. like something I should have come and checked out a long time ago. Oh, level five.
appears to have been playing solitaire. It's not really anything in here. <clears throat> Permanently reduces fuel needed for grab jump. Nice. See, all this time I've been playing Starfield, I didn't realize that those manuals and stuff did anything, so I would see them and not pick them up. That was a mistake. So, next playthrough will have to be, uh, hello. Mr. Cliptic just standing there, get killed. Frenzied modified Grendel. 11. Eh, still might be alright. I don't know. It's a cool thing. I think I've got this set to, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, very hard. Makes the weapons and loot just a bit better. better. Actually, it's a lot of it better. Might as well take that and sell it. Oh, that guy's level 18. Spacer faction that's in here is like, yeah, he's killing them all. Cause, you know, as soon as I'm done with them, I'm coming for you, dude. So, still in there, nothing.
it's the big chest. So, future access switch. <coughs> Is this where we first saw them fighting? I think so. Always worth checking. Never know what you might find in their pockets. Yeah, just junk to sell. All right, let's get the spacers now. It, nothing else here. Too much. Get out of here. Oh. Uh. Well, he got out, sorta. trade you stuff though and then have to you know get it right back from you so trying just to suffer through here for a second okay I think that might be it for this.
anything in this room, is there? Oh, whoops. Didn't mean to do that. <laughs> Any adventure you can fly away from. Is, is that how the saying goes? Okay, so let's go ahead and go to the cockpit. And we will undock. And before we head out, we'll dump all this stuff into the ship's cargo. <coughs> Modified Grendel seven point seven seven fifty round mag twenty percent against robots. Uh, ah, we'll just store that one for well, I don't know. These are heavy though. <coughs> store one of those. Just try to remember not to sell it. See what this is, this landing. I've only ever seen one ship that I could actually, you know, take. So whenever I go to and I find other ships, they're always inaccessible. <clears throat> I tried to get in one the other day, and uh, another ship is landing? Good lord. It's a hotbed of landing ships here. Terribly designed ship, though. Oh, 
Oh, he's level 64. <clears throat> I wonder if random ship encounters and stuff are just contingent upon what level you are when you get there. Best not leave anything useful behind. Some weapon cases and stuff here. Fortunately, most of them are empty. Say we take it. I don't want it to be my home ship or anything, but So let's go back to, I don't know, let's, uh, let's go back to the den. your ship for 22,474 credits. Uh, sure. <clears throat> Let's go dock and get back on our ship. Board. <clears throat> I find the interior of this ship comforting. I don't. Everyone need some work done? Sure, how about it? Oh, well, you know, 1821 to 1560. Um, I could just jump around, but no, that would be annoying. What would it be if I... What's, where's my ship? Yeah, this is what I, look what I did to the frontier. <laughs> this was uh, when I was getting my uh, my levels ranked up. Like this is engines aren't even the or the landing gear aren't even the same and stuff. <clears throat> Make home ship. Thank you. Oh wait. So if he's got seventy two thousand credits. Okay, no problem. You can modify my ships, but 
doesn't allow you to sell it later somewhere else all right back to the moon we go gave me. It would seem that the occupants left in a hurry. Hopefully for no reason we need to be concerned about. <laughs> we'll find out in a minute. Okay. Voltaire. Uh, I want to remind the research team that Voltaire is a highly proprietary supercomputer that is currently being contracted exclusively for use in the Project Prism. It is not meant for your own personal projects. Yes, it's amusing to see just how many decimal points of pi it can calculate how many bits of encryption it can brute force, or whether you can stimulate, simulate table tennis with a perfect aerodynamic simulation. There will be time for that later. For now, I need everyone concentrating on hitting our deadline. We're developing exciting new aerospace technology with our partner and client. That should be more than enough to keep anyone from being bored. Project Prism launch. <coughs> well, if you would. We're happy to announce that the first test launch of Project Prism will be held today. I would like everyone to suit up and join us on the roof at 9 EDT. Reminder to please sync all watches to, e watches to Eastern Daylight Time. Our partner will also be on radio for the launch. We'll be recording the event, so be on your best behavior. Okay? <coughs> Nova Galactic Project Log, Principal Engineer Lange. I admit, this is not the most disciplined team I've ever run. Malcolm keeps stealing computational time on Voltaire, and thinks I don't know this. And Sabina's been distracted lately, but won't tell anyone why. I really should demand answers from both of them. But honestly, I'm too preoccupied with this contract. We all are. Despite anything going on in our personal lives, there's something special about what we're building here. Okay. Orange has been here a while. Never made sense to me, stuff like that. Like, unless someone's here, that orange is going to be disgusting. <laughs> I 
Unless these are people's personal computers. God, I hate these things. Moon base, slate four. Okay, confession time. Being single on a moon base is the worst. I only get like an hour to use the communication link to Earth every couple of days. And let me tell you, there's long distance dating, and then there's like long distance dating, you know? Oh, hey there, I'm a scientist, deadly employed, willing to take you out for coffee in like six months when I'm back from space. <laughs> it's not a great opening line. <sighs> you seriously can't get a date? You're an astronaut. Hey, no one asked you. Do you ever get jealous? You know, the crew in the shipyard, building the actual vessels that are going to travel the stars. We're literally on a base on the moon. Oh, come on, Sabina. I'm trying to share my dreams here. Well, your dreams are always out there and never here where the rest of us live. Can't you just be happy doing your job? Where's the fun in that? Uh, in doing the work, I guess? <coughs> <coughs> this place is the dish ragged. It's there everywhere. <coughs> oh, somebody broke that computer. <coughs> Maybe they couldn't get Doom to run on it. There, haven't been through this door, and there's apparently something upstairs. It's a huge base, man. Well, for being, you know, that old. Slate three. Voltaire really is something else. A supercomputer so powerful they put it on the damn moon to keep it cool. Although by that logic they should be running it purely in the vacuum of space. But hey, good marketing material. Uh, I've been spending some off hours running some dumb simulations just because I can. My favorite so far is simulating the sound of every duck on Earth quacking after receiving a piece of bread. Oh you didn't know you wanted a real-time sim of feeding all the ducks, but now you have it. <coughs> You're welcome, humanity. This is sleep one. Nova Galactic Project Log, Principal Engineer Lang Shu. Voltaire is being reconfigured for this new initiative. The mass were being asked to crunches. Ambitious, even for a supercomputer. We might as well be asking it to count every grain of sand in every desert on Earth. Our partner isn't being very open about it. Every question I have goes through some discretionary channel. I'm surprised we even know we're working on a ship. It's like six. When I accepted the assignment up here, we were told to bring a couple of personal items. Some psychological study said it helps when you're away from Earth this long. I brought my grandmother's old abacus. 
I would play with it on her lap, and she'd teach me the Russian for all the numbers. She, uh... got word that she passed. Wow. The next shuttle isn't for three months, so I, uh... I won't be able to go to the funeral. <sighs> Goodbye, Babushka. Thank you for teaching me math. It's cool. I mean, it's it's cool that she taught her, not that you know, not that she passed. So. <clears throat> okay. Well, I guess let's head outside here. And go up to the roof. squeak on that door. The way they made it sound old and decrepit. It's pretty cool. Uh, check that out. Nice. NASA. That's pretty cool. <clears throat> but I landed on Earth and Earth was destroyed. Everywhere I tried to land, it was just desert. <clears throat> but we'll go. See, those places I went to is just trash. <coughs> Let's go down to NASA, though, and see what's left over there. Or just destruction. I would love to know what happened. thought that there was at least be like remnants of buildings or something not just dirt and mountains everywhere
this thing never got to launch. <coughs> See, if this tower survived, you know, and there's dirt and sand built up around it, obviously, but do you think other landmarks would, would have survived as well? onto that or you know whatever they call it vault onto it Why didn't he grab that? A notebook. <coughs> What's that one? Another NASA notebook. <coughs> the work would not have been done if the ship had not meant to launch. I've got the power cell, but are they going to make me jump all the way back down? They are. But where? I don't see anywhere to put said power cell that I picked up. I did look. Shoot. <laughs> 
see anywhere to put this power cell. <coughs> oh, barnacles. Didn't mean to do that. Well, didn't mean to do that. I gotta try and get back out of here again. Right back in that hole. Aha. <coughs> Here we go. Just pick those up just in case we need them. That's not what I was expecting. I was expecting an elevator. Hmm. Okay, so back on the hunt, I guess. Honestly, do not see anywhere else. Of course, I didn't see that first place either we just found. <coughs> Until just then. Obviously. Only got about five to ten minutes left of this playthrough section. a door, but <coughs> looks like a door to nowhere. No, uh, no power stations in here. How about out here? <coughs> no, still no. Same thing we need power for. I keep getting the shaft, okay. Uh, okay, what about here? What's this? Ah. Oh. Power cell accepted. More energy power cells. Did that give it power? Yes. All right. That's a launch facility. Here we go. Whoever once used 
this room probably never could have imagined all that has happened since it was built. I'd say not. What's that? Did a light just shine in here? Or is that just my flashlight or something? <coughs> that way. Adapted from a design originally intended for high altitude aircraft, the Mercury spacesuit would undergo several modifications to deal with pressure, oxygen, and thermal considerations. Even though the captain of the Mercury spacecraft itself, protected against the rigors of space travel, redundancy has always been key. In the event that the cabin were to depressurize and expose astronauts to the vacuum of space, the Mercury spacesuits would be able to offer a critical extra layer of defense. Well, yeah, otherwise they're dead. Oh, check that out. From 1968 to 1972, Project Apollo was the first successful program to put humanity on Earth's moon. The first moon landing that occurred on July 20, 1969 was actually Apollo's 11th flight with all previous launches, testing all the modules, orbits, and other critical data needed to ensure the astronauts could reach the moon and return safely. That's pretty dope. I'll take a Mercury set. Come here, you gotta hold stuff for me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's hold some of this crap. Oh, you can't care anymore. Well, goody. Project Gemini. From 1965 to 1966, in many ways, Project Gemini was a learning mission. While NASA's ultimate goal was to put a human being on the moon, many questions had to be answered before the Project Apollo could even begin. Gemini was tasked with answering how a person could survive in space for many days, how to connect spacecraft together, and how to improve spacesuit technology to operate outside of spacecraft. That is so cool. on though. Remember the final vitals and suit seal checks are essential? Yes, we've come a long way. As far as tolerances, yes, the number of people cleared for launch is much higher than it used to be, but these people's lives are still in our hands. I know there's rumors that the next launch is slated to be canceled, but let's not have that be on us. Assume it's go time every time. Your professionalism can make what is is what makes space travel just a bit safer, and we can use every ounce we can get. Archives damage, running system recovery. Delivery from Mars. Doctor Judith Tatiana. Is there 
recent delivery from Mars is unsettling. I was expecting rock samples or maybe fossils of microbial life. Instead, Dr. Victor Isa comes with two members of the military. A vision log. Dr. Judith Tabian. I have been trying to cozy up to Dr. Isa, Victor, to see what is going on. His team has completely commandeered one of the labs with those two military handrails, checking who comes in and out. I joked that maybe he found a little gray man doing an autopsy, and he grew very pale. Two days later, mm. he sends me vision logs. Dr. Judith Tatian, I have never been so nervous since I defended my dissertation. Four hours talking to Victor and his team about theoretical metals, atomic bonding, even a half hour diversion into magnetism that I'm pretty sure was to throw me off the trail hmm. of what the we were The cable just got thrown out the window. Yeah. Tower. Where they got me going now? Back over this way. Down. Oh, need a moment to walk that off. No, it wasn't that bad. The place sounds like it's falling apart, though. What's this? Project Prism. <laughs> the first tabs. Check that out. That's neat. Okay, Judith's personal recording. I just don't understand where these calculations came from. There's something wrong with the math? I think it's quite straightforward. That's not what I'm asking. We've had no success extracting even a sample of material from the object. No explanation for the gravitational effect. No uh, they found a, uh, they found a, uh, an artifact, didn't they? Judith. But you had me building these prototype colliders for months. And now you want me to pump helium-3 into it based on this equation you've written on the program. <coughs> Direct path, huh? Oh, why is this locked?
so it says it requires power, but I've got power cells. I think the thing would be right there. Nope, it's over here. It's, so I think some of these smaller ones are harder than the the others. Okay, we're gonna end up having to stop here um, as I am being called away. So we'll see if we can't get to this next little spot. Nah, there's just too much to explore here. So we will uh, we will pick this back up uh, when we get back. Um, these will just be shorter portions of the Let's Play. So, all right. So until next time. Uh, you know what? Let me save it real quick because I don't want to forget to save. That would be bad. All right. So, until the next portion of the Let's Play, remember, try to be kind to each other. The world needs more kindness, and kindness is free. Um, you don't have to agree with everything someone says, is, or does. You can still choose to be kind. Um, yeah, so, until next time, live long and prosper, and be safe. And uh, if you're enjoying this Let's Play, uh, you know, give the videos a like, uh, subscribe. You can catch these live at uh, twitch.tv forward slash only gramps gaming uh, i would appreciate follows and such over there as well so uh, you guys have a fantastic day god bless